Hello everyone, welcome to Metacore Gaming. I'm Aries War Spirit, and today we're going to be playing a game jolt game I found called Home. I started a little bit just to see what it was about, and it didn't seem like a whole lot. But when I got into it, when I started seeing the story peak, I stopped and I wanted to share this with you because I think it's going to be a really good little narrative game. And it's uh, you can play it through the web browser, I'll leave the link in the description below. So let's get started. <clears throat> Alright, so you're an adventurer for hire. You take a variety of jobs and contracts to earn a living, usually involving hunting monsters or criminals, escorting merchants and royalty, etc. It's the peak of one of the worst winters in years, and a warm fire quickly becomes a necessity to survive. Not too long ago, you purchased your own home on the outskirts of town. It's a nice change of pace from moving between inns all the time, but after so many days of returning to an empty, bare home, you feel slightly bored of the routine. Nevertheless, you keep on working. Overall, fairly pixelated game, and it was very slow to start. I don't want to show you all that, but the, the developer, it looks like this is like one of his first games, but I think he did a really good job for a starter. Uh, controls are a little wonky. You move around with the arrow keys, interact with the E, but then you have to continue the text with the mouse click from what I gather, just to give you all a heads up. The fire crackles warmly. Go out to work for the day. Let's see what kind of jobs we have. You spend the day tracking a beast that has been eating for local farmers' cows. Been eating the local farmers' cows. Well, space works actually. Dot, dot, dot. You eventually track it back to its lair, defeat it, receiving several cuts and bruises in the process. You claim your well-earned reward and then return home. The fire still crackles warmly. Settle down for the night. You make a simple meal and it sit next to the fire eating it. There's not much else to do and the day has you worn out. You go to bed early. It's kind of the same routine. I mean, we kind of go through this, the same thing through ourselves throughout life. Day in, day out, going home, go to work, go to home, go to work. It's just a monotonous, repetitive thing. And it's even worse whenever you're alone and by yourself. Now, it really does portray that across these transitions. And the one thing he has for, to look forward to is the warm crackling fire, which is such a nice feeling if you've ever used one. You escort a merchant carriage between two towns, facing numerous packs of bandits along the way. The long travel and the cold, frequent fighting is draining, but you're given a good sum of gold and some food as payment. You return home exhausted. Once again, you make a basic meal and fall into the chair next to the fire. You throw some more wood on the fire and go to bed. And we're back to the next day. You work as the bodyguard and guard a lord visiting a nearby town. Although he is accompanied by four of his own guards, he hired you for knowledge of the area. The lord is an unpleasant man, but works in, but the work is better than destroying monsters' nests in swamps. While walking through the markets, a clearly inexperienced pickpocket barges into the Lord and dashes off with a pouch of coins. Don't just stand there, fools! Catch the scum and bring him back here! You pursue the thief through a few streets but quickly catch up to him in a side alley and tackle him to the ground. The thief is a very young man, maybe still a teenager. Also might be named Aladdin. Please, sir, don't kill me! I can't leave my brothers alone to fend for themselves. Please just let me have this coin in my life and I swear I'll never cross you again. Should we take the coin back or let him keep the coin? As for hire, it's, we need to follow what we're told job wise. So we're going to take the coin back. You take the coin pouch back from the thief and tell him to run. He scrambles to his feet and sprints around the corner out of sight. 
pretty sure the king might have killed him or cut off his hand or something. You tell the Lord you couldn't catch the thief, but he dropped the pouch during the chase. That scum deserves punishment, but I'll be merciful today. You at least got the coin back. That's what matters. Take half of it as payment. You may you may leave. Your work here is done. I don't know how you take half a coin. Soon after that, you return home. You practice some swordplay before once again going to sleep early. You spot an unusual request on the notice board in town. A traveling alchemist is looking for a place to stay until winter ends. They're offering a hefty payment for this. You decide to take the quest and go to meet them. You enter the local tavern and as stated on the notice, the alchemist is sitting in the back corner by herself. You show her the notice and she beams with joy. You're a lifesaver! Thank you! I can't do a woman's voice that well. There's not a... There's not a hope of me getting my stock back home when the winter's being as bad as it is, and none of the inns would let me an alchemist stay because I'm apparently a hazard to other guests. Don't worry, I won't set your home- oh, that's her, sorry. Don't worry, I won't set your home on fire or blow it up or whatever it is people think alchemists do. Although I may need to bar- Blech. Although I may need to bring a few of my own things so I can continue working while the weather has me cooped up around here. She says this, she drops a sack of coins on the table. You're surprised the table can take that much weight. How big are the tables? You return home with the alchemist. And now it doesn't have me clicking on the fire. Thank you for letting me dump my stuff here. Besides, this place seems like it needs more life in it anyways. You really don't spend a lot of time here, huh? With the alchemist's help, you make some dinner and the two of you sit next to the fire to eat it. You both talk about work and the weird people and places you encounter as a result of it. For the first night in a long time, you spend much of your much of it laughing and talking cheerfully. You're surprised when you realize how late it is. You help the alchemist unpack the, the last of her belongings, and after showing her to her room, you head to bed. I think it's a really nice touch that whenever you were playing the originally Home Alone, that there's like no music, but now that you have an additional person, it kind of brings up the cheer a little bit. I think that's a really nice touch. Morning. Heading out this early? Here, take some of this with you. There's much better than those mass-produced potions you've been using before now. She hands you several vials of healing potion and medical bandages. You take a job as a carrier for a nearby townsmith, delivering weapons and armor to the city. It's long work, and tracking through mounds of snow to get from town to the city just makes it worse. After returning from the deliverers, the deliveries, you go to claim your payment from the smith. As you enter the shop, you see the smith talking to his daughter, a somber look on his face. When you see him, when he sees you in the door, he urges his daughter to go upstairs. You can tell from here that she's unwell, her skin is snow white, she seems to be breathing slightly heavily, and she rushes upstairs as her father urges. Welcome back, friend. The smith says, smiling warmly. You're here for the payment, I assume. Just give me a sec while I find the pouch. While he searches for the coin pouch, you think about the daughter, feeling worried. Should we ask about the daughter? Or don't ask? He seems like a very concerned character, and as is uh, my own morals, I, I'm concerned as well, so I would like to ask. You mention how his daughter seemed unwell and ask if there's any way you can help. Maybe we can give him some vials of healing potion. His expression darkens for a second before returning to his unusual unu ugh. His expression darkens for a second before returning to his usual jolly smile. No no, no problem. She's caught the flu, it seems. Nothing serious. He hands you your payment and bids you farewell. You return home worried about the Smith and his daughter.
Welcome back! I hate to ask this, but do you think you could help me with some potions later tonight? I have a pretty big batch order I need to fill for tomorrow. Don't worry, there's only basic ones. I'll show you how to make them. You spend the night helping the alchemists making batches of potions of various kinds. You learn a lot about alchemy in the process, and you place the boxes of new potions in the alchemist's carriages outside. You remember the smith's child and ask her if she's able to cure illnesses. According to her, if the sickness hasn't advanced too far, then it's usually possible. You clean up the leftover ingredients and apparatus while talking about the day's work and then go to bed. You're heading out now? I'm going in a few minutes too. Thanks again for helping me yesterday. Without you, I wouldn't have had time to even eat or sleep last night. Turns out we even made slightly too many potions, so here, take the extras. You take the extra potions and bring them with you. You end up passing through the same town as yesterday on the way home from Monster Hunt. You hear crowds of people shouting and cursing a few buildings over. You think it might be coming from the smith shop and you run there instantly. Daughter might be dying. There's a mob of townspeople outside the shop trying to break the door down. Ooh, maybe the plague. Like a bubonic plague or something? I should probably actually know what that is before I start talking about it. Among the shouts and roars, you hear what some, some of them are saying. She'll turn soon. The longer she lives, the more danger we're in. You must kill her. There's no chance for her. The majority of the mob seems blinded by rage, shouting much worse things. KILL THE DEMON! The child must die or we will all die! Sorry, I think my wife's sleeping. You thought you could hire infection from us. Do you want us to- Do you want to kill us all? You approach the mob and a few others turn to you. Adventure! The Smith's daughter has been infected by a demon! It's only a matter of time before she becomes an abomination herself and kills us all. You can help us, yes? Please kill the child and the smith. And the smith if you have to. And you can help keep everything in the shop and we'll even pay you for the work. No! Say you have a way to cure her, force the townspeople to leave. I think it would be better to tell the town people you have a way to cure them, because if you force them to leave, they're still going to be ticked off. You explain that there's a way to cure the child. Some of the townspeople realize how hastily they act in their fears. A small few keep trying to break into the shop. Beat the crap out of them! The calm townspeople restrain their enraged friends, probably their attempt to make up for their mistake, and you rush into the shop. You tell the smith you're here to help you and know of a way to cure the daughter. My apologies, friend, but I don't think I can trust anyone right now. My own neighbor- sorry, <laughs> got the wrong voice again. My own neighbors just tried to murder us. Some of them using weapons I made for them personally. As he says this, he looks to his daughter, who is hiding behind the counter. She seems barely conscious. The smith sighs and picks her up in his arms. I have no choice but to trust this. <clears throat> I have no choice but to trust this. this isn't some trap. Lead the way. You and the smith bolt out of the house and don't stop running until you get home. You can hear the townspeople fighting amongst themselves in the distance. Eventually, you reach home. You tell the alchemist what happened. She gathers all the necessary supplies and asks you and the smith to help her. For what feels like hours, the three of you work to make potions, antidotes, and medicines. As you near the end of your stock of supplies, the child's breathing calms, her skin regains its color, and she falls unconscious. The alchemist wipes her brow and takes a deep breath. That should do it. She should be as healthy as ever by tomorrow. All she needs now is rest. The smith falls into a chair, sobbing with joy. Thank you. Thank you, friends. I have no words to express my gratitude. Whatever you may need, I'm forever in your debt. We don't even have a home to return to now. I couldn't stand to take my neighbors in the eye again. I can't stand to look my neighbors in the eye again. At least some of them realize the error of their ways, thanks to you. You tell the smith that he can stay here for as long as I need. Does your kindness have no limits? That's twice now you've saved us. We'll find a way to pay you back, I swear it. The three of you clean away the supplies and equipment and put the home back to the way it was. I got a full house. 
I'm glad we could help her. I imagine she'd be perfectly fine by the time you arrive home tomorrow. Thank you for all you've done, friend. I think I'll stay up and watch her for tonight. She's sleeping soundly. You stay up talking to the smith about how daughter became infected. Apparently, the two came across a lesser demon while out in the woods and managed to cut the child before the smith cut it down. He tried four days to find a cure himself, fearing what would happen if the people knew of his daughter's illness. His fears were eventually realized, and that's when he came when when we came along. You talk for a bit longer before eventually going to sleep, exhausted. The smith stays up all night watching over his daughter. She's still sleeping. Good morning. You're leaving for work, I assume. Good luck out there. Once my daughter wakes up, I'll find a way to continue working on my craft. I have no intention of just being a freeloader here. Hey, looks like she stayed up all... Looks like he stayed up all night last night. I even told him countless times that she'll be fine, but he refused to sleep. Pretty sure if I had a child, they were sick, I'd stay up all night, too. Anyway, good luck in work today. Here's the usual. Take the potions and the bandages. You take a job defending miners from monsters, lurking in the dark, winding tunnels, winding tunnels. At the end of the day, you use some of the alchemist's medicinal bandages. You can practically feel your wounds vanishing. You collect your reward and return home, curious to see how this Miss Daughter is doing. She's woken up. As you can see, she seems to be full of energy too. If only she wasn't too shy as to keep it all bottled up. It's a relief to see the two of them safe. Considering what they went through, things could have been a lot worse. Um, Dad says you saved our lives. I don't know how to thank you for something that like that, but, um... Thank you, friend. We are in your debt. That's what Dad would say, right? Did that sound okay, Dad? I think they understand, sweetie. Even a grown man like myself can't find the words to thank them for what they've did. You don't need to worry about something like that. She woke up a few hours ago. More full of energy than ever. Uh, I also picked some things up in town so I can continue smithing to some extent here. Only some basics. I'll need to use the nearest town smithy for time to time. The alchemist said she could look after her while I'm out. My daughter's a bit shy around you people, but in time she'll certainly warm up to you both. When you have the entire village try to kill you, I would be nervous too. The four of you talk about various things for the night. The smith's daughter remains mostly quiet by her father's side. Occasionally, he throws a question her way in an attempt to get her to open up some more. She still seems awkward in the new environment. It seems she'll need some more time to settle in before she can feel completely comfortable around you and the alchemist. The smith's daughter goes to sleep early, and you and the others follow suit a few hours later. Ah, uh, good morning. I'm just finished a gift for you. It should help you keep you safe if your back is to the wall. He gives you a masterfully crafted dagger complete with ornate carvings and indentations. I'll have more when you where that come from. Look at it as a way of saying thanks for everything you've done for us. Dot dot dot. Good morning. Please stay safe. Hey there. Here. You know the drill. <laughs> she hands you some potions and medical bandages. Come home safe and try not to get too cut up out there. You don't want to terrify the poor, the poor child. Just come in mangled, just eye dangling. I'm sorry! You take a job gathering boar pelts in the woods. You don't know why exactly anyone needs boar pelts, but you don't really care as long as you get your reward. Although the wind and snow make the work uncomfortable, it's an easy day and you turn to the pelts to collect your payment. You turn in the pelts. You arrive home earlier than usual. Welcome back. Um, Dad's out at the smithy in town and he'll be back later on. The alchemist has been looking after me all day. I don't mind though. She's funny and really friendly. I've been learning a lot of things about potions as well. Oh, we're gonna have a little mini alchemist. Oh, hey. You're back. Way earlier than usual. The smith isn't even home yet. I've been looking after the little one since she's left. Since he's left. 
I feel like she's opened up a lot as well. She's been taking interest in alchemy. I taught her to make some basic stuff and she's taken it pretty well. She has talent. She's also been asking a lot about your work. I think she'd like it if you talk to her about it later on. It's probably gonna happen tonight. All three of you talk by the fire. This Miss Dodd is clearly more comfortable here after spending time with the alchemist. She asks you about your adventures. You tell her about some of the more interesting jobs. Her eyes are wide with wonder while you talk about the monsters you've hunted, the people you've met, and everything else that comes in mind. The smith arrives home. His face lightens when he sees all of you. The four of you stay up talking cheerfully throughout the night. Eventually, you force yourself to go to bed. That's so cool, because before he'd just go to bed early, get up early, and now it's, he's spending all that time with his, his kind of like his new family, you know, it's... It's really a nice feeling. I, I like how the developers coming across with that message. Good morning, friend. I trust you slept well. It's amazing how quickly she's opened up to both of you. I guess it's all thanks to, Al to the alchemist. I wouldn't have thought she'd be so good with children. Anyway, good luck out there. Good morning. Come home safe, okay? And also, um, when you get home, do you think you could show me how to be an adventurer like you? I know it's dangerous for me, but I at least want to know how to use a sword and keep people safe. You tell your old teacher if it's okay with her father. Really? Thank you. I'll ask him as soon as I'm finished helping with the alchemist. I can't ask him. Hey, good luck today. It looks like she wants to help me out with my work from time to time. She really has taken a shine to the whole thing. While talking, she hands you the usual potions and advantages. The day is once again unremarkable. You hunt some animals and gather some meat for the village while the local hunter is unwell. You take your payment and return home. Sorry if you hear some snuffling, I'm trying to do it quietly, but I think I got some pollen allergies and whatnot. Hey, welcome home. Thanks to the little one, I managed to make enough stock today that I can actually relax for once. Um, you're asking why I'm still holding this potion? Honestly, I don't really know. Habit, maybe. It's called alcoholism. Not really. Welcome back. My daughter's been telling me how she wants to learn to fight. This might surprise you, but I have no problem with that. She would know how to defend herself someday, so why not start young? My only request is that you use these instead of steel weapons. He gives you a pair of finely carved wooden swords. Bokens! I made them earlier after she first asked me about learning. They should make things a bit safer than swinging three-foot razor blades around. I'm pretty sure she's like three feet. Welcome back. Dad has to let me learn how to use a sword. When can we start? Right now. You teach the Smith's daughter some of the fundamentals of de defense and swordplay. Evasion, distance, angles, and striking. The concepts don't come naturally to her, unlike alchemy. She's clumsy on her feet and she's usually f easily flustered, but she refuses to stop until she makes some progress. After a few hours, she's already better than when she started. She's better at staying at safe distance and is slightly more competent at her footwork. You call it You call it at that for the night. She has much to learn, but she clearly has the drive to keep improving. The Smith and the Osmus sat nearby and chatted the whole time. After you finish training, the four of you eat dinner and talk amongst yourselves. You go to bed afterwards promising the Smith Star that you'll train with her every day you're able. As long as you don't get jacked up on your adventures. Good morning. I don't think I've ever seen my daughter enjoy herself as much as when you were sparring last night. In fact, since we've been staying here, she's been happier and more energetic than usual. All the more reason for me to be thankful to the two of you. Seems like she's about to start practicing again already. She only woke up. She only woke up. How much energy does that child have? <laughs> Smith is... <laughs> the alchemist does not sound like the smith. As per usual, take these. You take the potions of bandages. Stay safe out there. Morning. I'll be practicing some more while you're out, so I'll be even better by the time you get home. Come home safe. You spend the day hunting, and the monster has been eating a villager's crops. You track it down and defeat it. Any injuries you take are quickly remedied by the alchemist's supplies. You take your payment and set off home. As you trudge through the wind and snow, you realize you've been looking forward to returning home each day 
something you haven't felt in a far too long. You don't know how much longer this winter will last, or if the others will choose to live somewhere else once it ends. You would gladly let them stay if they wanted to, and some things tell you that they might end up doing just that. That will be a choice to be made much later on, though. You approach the front door and realize that right now, the only thing that you really care about is that you're home. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. The end. I seriously got goosebumps from that. That was actually a really cool uh, way to end it. But wow, that was... For a beginning game, I have to say, like, this, this is the stuff that I look for that when I want to put on the channel eventually are the... The music's a little loud. That, these are the things I'm trying to look for to put on the channel are very immersive games, and it may not even be graphically immersive, it's just story, atmosphere. These are the things I'm really looking forward to because it was such a simple concept, such a simple story, but at the same time it was very, very deep, and I enjoyed that so much. That was actually really good from the developer, and I'd like to say that you did a really good job in my opinion. And make more like this. This is awesome. I, I couldn't expect anything better really. That was... I, I got goosebumps. I can't really... You know, if you didn't... If you liked it, you know, go tell the developer. Encourage him to make more. You know, like my channels if you liked the video. I'll leave descriptions in the below. If you liked the video, subscribe. Share it. I, I'm actually a little bit lost for words, so I'm pretty much, I guess I'm going to cut it here. And I hope that y'all have a good day. And I'm going to try and put up See if I can record another video because this wasn't planned. I'm trying to get in a routine for scheduling and hopefully that will turn out. Uh, I'm still working on editing everything and I want to make sure that when I, I can stay on a constant schedule. But, wow. Alright, so you guys have a, have a great day. And hopefully I can get another video up. If not, I'm at least try to do one on a one every week basis. I'll try to make at least that repetitive to the point to where it's scheduled and then hopefully after that I can add a, a second episode and then a third episode uh, throughout the week. So y'all have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.